जय राधा माधवा कुंजा बिहारे जय राधा माधवा कुंजबिहारी गोपी जन बलाभा वृदारे गोपी जन बलाभा जासोदनंदना ब्रजचन रंजना जासोदनंदना ब्रजचन रंजना जामुनाथीरा वना चादी जामनाथीरा बना चादी जायम राधा माधव कुंजबे हरे जाय राधा माधव कुंजबे हरे गोपी जन बलाभा गरीब रे गोपी जन बलाभा जासौर नंदना ब्रज जन रंजना जसौर नंदना ब्रज जन रंजना जामन तीरा छादी जामन तेरा जय राधा माधव कुंजबे हरे जाय राधा माधव कुंजबे हरी जाय विष्णुपाद पर महंस परिवर्गर अष्टर सतसी श्रीमाधिवेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णवृंद की ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की कौर फिम नंदी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय दिस मॉर्निंग वर रीडिंग फ्रॉम टेक्स्ट 19 कैंटो 10 चैप्टर 25 
Govardhanachalam Dadhara Lilaya Vishnush Chatrakam Eva Balakaha Ityukvai Kainahastena Kritva Govardhanachalam Dadhara Lilaya Vishnush Chatrakam Iva Balakaha Ityukvai Kena Hastena Kritva Govardhana Chalam Dadara Lilaya Vishnush Ityukam Iva Balakaha Ityuktvai kena hastena Kritva govardhana chalam Dandhara lilaya vishnus Chatrakam eva balakaha Ityukvai kena hastena Kritva govardhana chalam Dadhara lilaya vishnus Chatrakam eva balakaha Ityukvai kena hastena Kritva Govardhana Chalam Dadhara Lilaya Vishnus Chatrakam Iva Balakaha Iti Thus Uktva Having spoken Ekena With one Hastena Hand Kritva Taking Govardhana Achalam Govardhan Hill Dadara He held it Lilaya Very easily Vishnu Lord Vishnu Chatrakam, a mushroom. Eva, just as. Balakaha, a child. Translation, having said this, Lord Krishna, who is Vishnu himself, picked up Govardhan Hill with one hand and held it aloft just as easily as a child holds up a mushroom. Chatrakam, a mushroom. Purport, it is confirmed in the Hari Vangsha that Sri Krishna picked up the Govardhan mountain with his left hand. Sa Dritta Sangato Meghair Giddy Sav Yena Panina. Quote With his left hand he picked up that mountain which was touching the clouds. According to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, when Lord Krishna was preparing to lift Govardhan Hill, a partial expansion of his Yogamaya potency named Samhadi, Samhadika, Samhadiki, Samhadiki, 
Hari ki. Temporarily removed all the rain from the sky so that he ran very swiftly from the porch of his house to the mountain. Neither his turban nor other garments became wet. Some hadi ki. So. Commentary. There's a bunch. Not as much as yesterday. Starting with Vishwanath, there's references the BBT purport shows. Saying this to himself, that is, the five verses preceding is Krishna's thoughts. So Krishna is speaking to himself or thinking, having finished contemplating. With one hand, his left hand, he lifted the mountain. Hari Vangsha mentions the left hand. Doesn't give the Sanskrit. He lifted Govardhan with his left hand, blocking the clouds, and beneath the mountain created a living space in the form of a house. It, he held it very easily, just like holding up a mushroom. When Krishna merely desired to lift Govardhan Hill, his Samharika Shakti, parentheses, destructive energy, arising from Yoga Maya Shakti, cleared the rain from the sky to the extent that when Krishna ran from the veranda of his house to lift Govardhan, his clothing and turban did not get very wet. Jiva Goswami's commentary is much longer. It should be understood that he brought everyone near Govardhan when the huge clouds first appeared. He raised the hill with his left hand, according to Harivangsha. He lifted it from the base. Jiva Goswami writes, one can see the split just north of Manasi Ganga. He quotes some Sanskrit, doesn't say where it's from. I held up Govardhan in order to protect them. The mountain is known as a hill of food and its worship, it it is worshipped by Indra with devotion. The word achalam, or mountain, also indicates that the mountain did not move. He lifted the hill with ease. He had his right hand on his waist. This is seen in some ancient deity forms. He held up the mountain like a mushroom. This shows that he did not go beyond the pastimes of his Balya period. Now, several commentators say the same thing. I don't understand why this says that, but they do. Quote, how could a small child hold up a mountain? Answer, he was Vishnu, most powerful in that form because of his inconceivable energy. Some versions have Krishna instead of Vishnu. So like in the third line, Dadar Lilaya Vishnu, some say Krishna. The meaning is the same. This is also mentioned in Vishnu Sahasranam. Here's one of the thousand names of Vishnu. Anir Deshaya Vapu Sriman Ameyatma Mahidri 
Ndrik. That means he has an indescribable body. He is endowed with all wealth. He is immeasurable. He held up a huge mountain. Mahadri Ndrik. One of the names in Vishnu Sahasranam. According to his desire, he held the mountain high in the sky. Vaishampayana says, Sa Dritta Sankato Meghai. He held the mountain so that it touched the clouds. Then there's another reference in Sanskrit without saying where it's from. The mountain rose up with wings. The Vidyadharas, Uragas, Gandharvas, and Apsaras began praising it. The mountain touched the clouds as a pastime. He did this in order that all the of Raja could see easily in order to exhibit Govardhan's great beauty and in order that he could hold it easily. Listen to this. When he raised the mountain, a large stone separated from the middle of the lower portion of the hill and became, and became situated in the middle of the hole. The hole, apparently, that's where from which he lifted the hill, there was a hole. That was right in the middle. Krishna climbed on that stone and fixing the lower and middle portions of the mountain in his left hand, he held it comfortably. Water was prevented from coming under the mountain by his Leela Shakti. Look carefully. Sometimes you'll see uh, what was being described here. That is, Krishna is standing on a stone. And as he's standing on the stone, he's raising the hill, which like it makes sense, he's a little boy and everybody's under the hill, but he's a little boy. So he has to be a little higher than everybody else so the hill doesn't hit them in the head. So he made that arrangement. And then, of course, there's different explanations of why the water didn't go under the hill. One of those explanations is the Sudarshan Chakra went zooming around and around and around so fast that the water evaporated. The heat of the Sudarshan evaporated the water so it didn't go under the hill. And that doesn't contradict what this says. This says water was prevented from coming under the mountain by the Leela Shakti. Harivanksha says, quotes the Sanskrit, he held the mountain up to the clouds with his left hand. It became like a dwelling with the form of a splendid house. Final paragraph. He held the mountain in his left hand to make the people happy with the understanding that he was not tiring since they were only interested in his happiness with no regard for their own lives. Otherwise, they would all become, otherwise they would all uh, experience great sorrow. Oh, they would all die because of great sorrow. This should be understood in connection with other pastimes also. And then Sanatana Goswami, commenting on this verse, he lifted the hill with the ease with his left hand, 
according to Harivanksha. This is also seen in deity forms. Govard, Govardhan is mentioned directly. Being famous among great mountains or to explain that it was beneficial to the cows. It does not move at all, achalam. He did all this easily, lilaya. His right hand on his waist, since he was a small child, balaka, still young, nanda kumar, and he was vishnu. This shows that he did not go beyond the pastimes of his balia period. This is seen in some ancient deity forms. He held up the mountain like a mushroom. This shows that he did not go beyond the pastimes of Balya period, being absorbed in those pastimes. Since he pervades the universe, Vishnu, there was no effort in doing this. He was like a child who holds up a mushroom grasping its stem. Similarly, he held one portion of Govardhan and the whole mountain was easily lifted. Vaisampayana says, Sa Dritta Sangato Meghai. He held the mountain so that it touched the clouds. Then another the mountain rose up with wings, the Vidyadras, Uragas, Gandharvas, Apsaras began praising. The wings are mentioned because otherwise he could not lift the mountain with his tender hands. The peak touched the clouds as part of his play. He held the mountain in his left hand to make people happy with the understanding that it was not tiring since they were only interested in his happiness with no regard for their own lives. Otherwise, they would all die because of great sorrow. We heard something quite similar. Although he was small in size, he became comparable to Govardhan. Elsewhere, he also could modify his form according to the situation. And the last is one more commentary from Vishwanath. Similar points. Hari Vangsha confirms that Sri Krishna picked up Govardhan Hill with his left hand, Sa, Dritta, Sangato Meghair, Giri, Savyena, Panina. With his left hand, Krishna picked up that mountain which was touching the clouds. With the umbrella of Giriraj, Krishna blocked the Samvartaka clouds and created a living space in the form of a house beneath the mountain. Krishna held the mountain without any difficulty, just, as a, just like a child holding a mushroom. When Krishna was preparing to lift Govardhan Hill, a partial expansion of his yoga maya potency named some Hadaki temporarily removed all the rain from the sky so that as Krishna ran very swiftly from the porch of his house to the mountain, neither his turban nor other garments became wet. So there's a few things. Um, in some parts it's mentioned this is his Leela Shakti. In some parts it's his Yogamaya Shakti and portions of his Yogamaya Shakti, Samvartiki Shakti. And Somehow, our acharyas understand all these things. <laughs> I mean, Prabhupada kept it very simple for us, and you know, his commentary in the Bhagavatam is for 
the Western audience, and these commentaries are for the you know different audience than the, the Western audience. And so there's different details and points of emphasis. That what Prabhupada would commonly do, keeping it simple for us, uh, just refer again and again and again and again, Prasya Shakti Vivadaiva Shruyate Sobhavaki Jnana Balakriyacha, and just say it again and again. <clears throat> the absolute truth has unlimited potencies, and Jnana Bala and Kriya are principal. And jnana, bala, and kriya are used, they have subpotencies. And they're used in all of this leela, including specifically, they're mentioned in terms of creation, but they're also um, in his pastimes within creation. We, we find um, in Canto, to chapter 9, there's several places, but this is one where it's lots of detail. When Brahma comes before Vishnu, this is, you know, doing his meditation and for a long time, and then Vishnu appears before him in his yogpith, that's, you know, his, the, the center of his spiritual realm. And Brahma comes before Vishnu and sees Vishnu surrounded by, the verse just gives numbers, the 16 and the 12 and the this and the that. In the purport, Prabhupada gives what the 16, etc. represent. And in short, they're the spiritual counterpart of what we find here. The spiritual counterpart and they're personified. You know, here we have Earth, and we have Mother Earth, and surrounding Lord Vishnu is whatever Earth Shakti is in the spiritual realm. So, from the spiritual realm, to the material realm. That's part of the process of creation and to make all that happen. It's his potencies that manifests this place, the earth, and the air and, and water and fire. And those are manifestations of the spiritual reality where there isn't a physical manifestation or there's no phenomena Canto, which is in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 2, uh, Krishna speaks of jnana and vijnana, and knowing these two, there's nothing further that remains to be known. And Prabhupada translates these terms as knowledge that's phenomenal and knowledge that's noumenal. And the, the, in the, the translation in the word for word of vijnana is not noumenal, because what does noumenal mean anyways? It, it's um, the soul and the source of both. That's, you know, supreme soul. That's, so, Vigyana, we commonly hear Prabhupada describe Vigyana as realized knowledge. Realized knowledge, Vigyana, theoretical and realized knowledge, Jnana Vigyana. Uh, I've been spending some time on these ter terms, and consistently, Vigyana is not just realized knowledge, but it's the spiritual realm. Understanding the spiritual and the controller of both spiritual and material. That's vijnana. Realized knowledge is 
the, the, the basis and support of everything. That's Krishna. So he has para and apara prakriti, and he's the source of both and the support of both. So what's here exists there. The, to saying it again, the, the material potencies that we find here have their spiritual counterpart there. These material potencies are manifestations in a reflected form of the potencies of the spiritual world. It's just a reflection. It's just a reflection. Like chapter 15, the banyan tree that's upside down and so forth, reflected in a lake. But in the spiritual world, these potencies are fully spiritual. And so by the fully spiritual potency, uh, sp specifically, the, the, we hear this definition in the um, Acharya's commentary, this samvartaki shakti is the shakti of devastation, samhadaki Shakti is the Shakti of devastation, but devastation doesn't take place in the, in the spiritual world. But the, the potency of devastation that's in the material world has its spiritual counterpart. And so he, Krishna uses this potency of devastation, which is a sub-potency of his Yogamaya potency, to remove the rain so he doesn't get wet. The turban and clothing don't get wet. His Yogamaya potency serves his pastimes, and there's sub potencies of Yogamaya potency to serve his pastimes. And that's the spiritual reality, and then there's the material counterpart. There's the devastation. There's partial and complete devastation, and there's little ones. The force of devastation. The forces of devastation are manifest by Brahma. But where does Brahma get those potencies to manifest them from? From Vishnu, and Vishnu engages them in purposes for the material creation, devastation of all things. That's And devastation of all things comes through the time energy. Anyway, it's, it's, um, the, the machinery is very intricate. And behind the machinery is the cause. Krishna is the remote cause from which all other effects become causes of some other effect, become causes of some other effect, and downstream the domino effect of cause and effect. But he is the cause of all causes, and not perceivable by our senses. Adhoksuja. But he's the remote cause, without which nothing happens. So. That's on this plane, now back to the spiritual plane. Things are happening because Krishna wants them to happen, and when Krishna wants something to happen, his Yogamaya potency arranges. And so all of the all of the details that are here. I mean it's um, it's fascinating. Besides, you know, so supposing little child hears this description, in Krishna book, a, a child can hear. Krishna decided he wanted to curb the pride of Indra, and so he goes to Govardhan Hill, and he lifts Govardhan Hill. And all the details of Samvartaki Samhariki, Samhariki, 
Hari takes away some Hari ki. Um, <clears throat> child doesn't need to know that. It says Krishna is wonderful. But there's detail and there's detail and there's detail that the wonderfulness of Krishna works through his potencies. And his potencies are moving according to his volition. He wants to, so Krishna's volition includes, we've been hearing, he wants to attract the hearts of the Vrajbhasis draw them closer to him. He wants to curb the pride of Indra. And he wants the, the, the beauty and the glory of Govardhan to be seen and heard and told. And so there's intention, there's multiple intentions and multiple potencies that are fulfilling his will. Without um, the first nine cantos are there to help understand properly. Even with the first nine cantos, understanding properly isn't easy. It's not by mental power we can understand. By sound vibration we can understand and by slowly understanding how everything material and spiritual comes from Krishna not just saying it, the statement is there, aham sarvasya pravavo matak sarvam pravartate. The principle that's there, and then hearing some details and details and details through the, the process of Srimad Bhagavatam unfolding in the uh, graduate study level, the message of Bhagavad Gita, then it becomes more... Um, possible to understand, not just notionally accept, but understand Krishna's pastimes, how he's just engaging various energies to achieve his purposes of enjoying. It says Leela Shakti and Yogamaya Shakti and sub Shaktis of all of those. So like his Leela Shakti caused the rain, the flooding, to not enter under Govardhan Hill. And, that, you know, that's a clever explanation for, for the materialist, oh, come on. But from the, the transcendental perspective, why not? His Leela Shakti does what, is, what he wants. And his Leela Shakti rules over everything certainly everybody in the spiritual world. And when he appears in the material world, his Leela Shakti prevails. And then so it just leaves the devotee thinking how wonderful is Krishna. Hmm. And that, that explanation is sufficient. Quite possibly, it doesn't give the information. The Leela Shakti may have subpotencies too. That's most likely. It's certainly quite possible, and why not? So, potencies move things. And Krishna is the powerhouse of all potencies. That's, that's Bhagavan. He must have all potencies in full. His pastimes are the, it's a, an exhibition of those potencies to achieve these various purposes. Another purpose is to give subject matter for us so many thousands of years later to hear, chant, and remember and become purified. So Krishna is doing many things through his potencies. Any discussion? All eyes are on you, Shavan. Does anybody have some points? Yeah.
Two questions from online, Marsh. Okay. Girish Prabhu, often times we hear Krishna lifted Govardhana in his tip of pinky finger. This verse of or the commentaries you read does not mention that. Is that coming up in the further verse? I don't know. The verse that we read speaks he lifted with one hand. And so the commentary on this verse is speaking left hand. Most likely, there's something further that says the little finger of his left hand. But uh, yeah, I, I can't say definitively. Yes, little finger, left hand, coming up. Second question from uh, Satya Sarah Prabhu. Even after receiving so much transcendental knowledge and practicing for so many years, still there is a propensity to act under the influence of illusionary energy of Krishna. Surprise! We're conditioned souls. He's making a statement and, you know, what to do, you continue the purification process. And the purification process is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. That's our bhakti purification process. We just continue. As the internal potency strengthens, the external potency influence subsides. You have something? You're leaving. Actually, as I was listening to this past time, I was remembering an event from the past. When I was first becoming a devotee, um, then my the first question that my friend asked was about Govardhan Leela. Really? Like, oh, do you, do you really want to believe that a small child lifted a hill with his... So this is mythology. You cannot be a Hare Krishna because, you know, they say all these things. <laughs> so that was her argument. That how, how can you say that actually a small child can lift a mountain? Well, you know the answer. That small child isn't just a small child. He's performing a pastime to look like a small child, but that which is the source of everything can do whatever the source of everything wants, including appear as a small child. And, or if God can float planets effortlessly in the sky, why God can't lift a hill? Yeah, actually at that point of time, I was also bewildered. <laughs> at that point of time, I was also bewildered. Bewildered. <laughs> but you stuck with it. Anything else? Okay. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.